Hello, this is Joe Pryor with the virtualrealestateteam.com in Oklahoma City. And this is the first in a series of videos directed to first-time home buyers. We all start somewhere. We all start with our first house and the question we always ask is, how do I get started? So in the first two videos, I'd like to do a general overview. The first one will take us from the start, our first meeting, up until the time of contract. The second one will go from contract to closing. And then what we'll do after that is <clears throat> fill in some details. We'll talk a little bit about appraisals, about inspections, about closing costs, uh, everything that's going to be important to you uh, to know just a little bit more detail. But let's start at the beginning. And what is the first thing that we do? Well, my suggestion is, is to meet with an experienced professional. Uh, someone that's been in real estate for a while, someone that has had a lot of experience, has had a good reputation, and is going to represent you. And what you're going to do is you're going to sit down with someone like me, and we're going to start with your job. Because in this day and age, uh, in terms of qualify, qualifying for a loan, you need to have a job. You need to have income. Now, that may be a single income, maybe two incomes, but what we're going to do is we're going to take that one or two incomes and we're going to add them together if there are two. We're going to take the gross amount before taxes. Uh, and then what we're going to take is a what's called a front-end ratio. We're going to take typically in the upper 20s, 28, 29% of that gross revenue that's coming in on a monthly basis. And we're going to come up with a dollar figure, which is our maximum scenario for a mortgage. So let's say, for instance, that's $1,500 a month based on your income. The second thing that we do is that we now look at something called a back-end ratio. This is where we combine a house payment with long-term bills. Now, long-term bills would be like credit cards. It would be a car loan, a signature note like a, a student loan or something at the bank that you're paying off that's interest sensitive. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the minimum payments or the standard payment with all of those. We're going to add those together and that's going to be a higher ratio like about, let's say, 41%. And what we're going to do is let that take precedence over it. So if you have quite a few long-term bills, then if that brings the monthly payment down to $1,300 in order to fit into that back end, then that's the maximum that we can go. So let's say that happens and now we're at $1,300 a month. So we're looking, okay, we can do a hundred or $150,000 or $160,000 home. Then what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into your budget because you know, it may not be something where you want to max yourself out, especially on your first home. So let's take that $1,300. And you say, well, you know, Joe, I'd like to put $200 a month in the safe and safe investment account. account. It's an excellent idea. And so now we're looking for an $1,100 a month payment. So maybe that in Oklahoma is $130,000 to $140,000. So now what we've done is we have targeted what we want to do. We qualify. It looks like we have a budget that we're getting things into. The next step is we go to a mortgage company. We go to a lender. And I'm going to recommend various lenders to you with good reputations for being honest, having good rates, and terrific service. Because they're going to help you through the process to understand what you're doing. That's important that we educate you as you go along. What they're going to do is pull up your credit report. And your credit report consists of three credit reporting bureaus. They're going to average it out or take a middle score. And you're going to need, going to, need to have a 640 on an FHA or a 620 on a VA or a 720. total score on a conventional. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug that in decide what kind of loan you want to get, VA, FHA, or conventional. Now, we'll do that in a separate video also. So what they do is say, hey, look, I've looked at your income document, I've looked at your bill, I've seen your credit report, and I'm going to pre-qualify you for a certain amount of money. And let's say it is at $1,300. We say $1,100. Terrific. So now we set the table. We know what you qualify for. We know there's a lender that is going to help you out in this. Look, this is what your time and your money to go through with. And now what we do is we sit down again and say, okay, what kind of house meets our needs? Now, our first home is not an old home. It's not a home that's going to be the dream home of your life, more than likely. But it's one that is bought right and gets you to your dream home. So I'm going to look for value. My job is not to tell you what you love. My job is to back you up and say, hey, I think we've got about $20,000 worth of equity to start with here. We've got a nice downside. That's how we're going to do. We're going to look at houses. And let's say we go look at 10 houses that meet your needs that you've given to me. And out of those 10, five we reject immediately because, hey, you got to see the house. I can have them around. And so now we have five of them around.
but maybe two of them are not in areas that we really feel good about. Maybe the creation is not good, maybe there's too many renters in there. So we throw out two and now we have three. What you and I are going to do is we're going to go back in a second time at least, and we're going to look at those three, and we're going to take a piece of paper or, uh, or your iPhone with a reading system on it, and we're going to go, these are the pluses and minuses, and we're going to find our number. One choice. And what you and I are going to do is we're going to decide on what terms we want to put into that contract. It starts with price, of course. It also is a condition of property. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to say, we can tolerate up to a thousand dollars worth of repairs that we want the seller to do, but the contract is subject to renegotiation if the repairs go over that amount. So we negotiate that. We also negotiate a third thing, which is when do we close and who pays the closing costs. On who pays the closing costs, I've got a separate video for you on that also. So that's the process. We start with the meeting. We start with The numbers, we start with the job, we start with the bills, we go to a lender, we understand that the lender is going to give you the loan and what is That's kind of loan for you. Then what we do is we go out and look at homes that meet your needs according to your definition. Then I'm there to back you up. We've done a contract, we put the terms in that are in your best interest. We may negotiate back and forth just a little bit, and that's the subject of another video. And Ultimately, we've got a contract, and now we are ready to go into step two. So in our second video, we're going to take you from contract acceptance to the closing table. This is Joe Pryor with virtualrealestateteam.com in Oklahoma City, where we deliver traditional real estate values at the speed of technology.